Yes. Glory to his name. We welcome those who are online this morning. Lighthouse FGC at sbcglobal.net. And so we ask that you would join with us today as we come before the Lord and give him thanks for this next to the last Sunday in the year. Yes. Right. And Lighthouse pulled out for church. We're located at 1153 Hamilton Avenue right here in the city of Seaside. And we are welcoming you today, not only online, but we welcome you to come and join us in the house. Amen. Amen. Let's open with the word this morning. We're going to be reading from Psalm 121 to 123. Yes, amen. They're all short, so you won't be standing long. But when I started reading last night, I just wanted to keep reading. So I'm going to bless you today with the word of the Lord. And it reads, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keeps thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Yes. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compacted together, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment and thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Unto thee lift I up my eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hands of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hands of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God yes. until that he have mercy on us. Yes. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. It has, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, thou may Israel and Lighthouse and all people say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quickly. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The streams had gone over our souls. Then the proud waters had gone over our souls. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of a fowl. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord yes. who made heaven Amen. and earth. Yes. Father, we thank you, Father God, that Amen. we can look to you and cast every care upon you knowing that you care for us. Yes. We thank you for this another day to come into your house and to give praise unto your name. We reverence and honor you because, because you are the great God. You yes. are the great I am. You are the everlasting Father. And Lord, as we have come here today, Father God, we exalt and lift your name up and make yes. it be, Father. Thank you. Thank you for this house of prayer today, Father. Thank you for those that are online. Thank you for those that are in the house today. 
We just thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit that is here with us, oh God. And we invite you, God, to just have your way in our midst. Yes. Let your kingdom be filled, fulfilled here today, God. Let your will be done here today in yes. the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. And we be pleased to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. For it is in your name we pray and we give thanks. Amen and thank Amen. God. Amen. 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 declaration up and we're going to declare once again what the, the Lord would have us to declare yeah. and it begins we have come, come here today, today to worship the Lord and to hear what he has to say. He has led us to this place that is full of his spirit and love and reminds us that all good things come from above. By God's spirit and not by might the people shall press their way to this Holy Ghost site. It is not hard for us to see that the dying world is out there, and at God's request, until they are saved, I shall not rest. As a child of the Father, I pledge to do my part. I will actively seek to lead the lost to God. Truly, there is a reality in serving the Holy One. Just look see what the Lord has done. We call them from the four corners of our community to come and partake of this glorious opportunity. But for this hour, my heart is turned to the Holy One, to praise, worship, and give thanks for all that He has done. This is my Holy Bible, the inherent and infallible Word of God. And I rely on my Bible with all my heart. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, just put your hands together. Yeah.
this season, Father, that we call Christmas. But we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that he is our Savior. He is our rescue, oh God. We thank you that he is our Redeemer, Father. We just bless your mighty name. And Father, we thank you for your word going forth in spirit and in power. We thank you for every ear being open, every heart being open, Father. And Father, we thank you for your word being made so plain that a fool cannot err, Father. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for your anointing that destroys every yoke. We thank you for your anointing that removes every burden, Father. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I covenant with you, Father, to speak only what I hear you speak. And to do what I only see you do, Father. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, I give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to get right to the word. We're going to speak to you this morning about a revelation of Christmas. And we're coming from Matthew 1, 21 and Luke 2 and 30. A revelation of Christmas. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 and Luke chapter 2 in verse 30. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his goodness this morning. Amen. That he is good. Yes. That he is worthy to be praised. Matthew 1 21. When you have it, let's say amen. amen. Matthew 1 21 and it reads, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Yes. And Luke chapter 2, verse 30, in a, a very short scripture. Luke chapter 2, verse 30. Luke chapter 2 and verse 30. When you have it, let's say amen. amen. Luke chapter 2 and verse 30 says, For my eyes have seen thy salvation. Yes, amen. Amen. Uh, you may be seated and thank you. Standing. So we're talking about a revelation of Christmas. And all of us have heard about Christmas. Everybody. Yes. Because it's all, all on everybody's mind at this season. But we need a revelation of Christmas. Many, many people need a revelation of Christmas. And even the church the body of Christ need a revelation of Christmas. And to those that are not in the body of Christ, many people think it, it's about Santa Claus, or it's about getting drunk, and it's about throwing this party, but it's not really about any of that. Christmas really is about salvation. It's about the birth of Jesus, but really it's about salvation. Christmas is a word that combines two other words. The combination, Christmas is a combination of Christ and it's a combination of Mass. And if you're a Catholic, you know what Mass is. So I'm going to primarily focus on the word Christ. So Christmas is Christ Mass. The word Christ, many of us, we think it's Jesus Christ is Jesus' last name. But Christ is not Jesus' last name. The word Christ in its Greek means to, to be anointed. The word Christ really comes from Hebrew, and it comes from the Hebrew word Messiah. And Messiah means deliverer. Christ and Messiah is the same word. So Christmas 
Messiah means delivered. The word mass is a ceremony. So when you put all that together about Christmas, about Christ, Jesus Christ, we celebrate his birth. Jesus Christ is the one who was anointed, appointed, empowered to deliver creation. Not only just for Christians, but Jesus was appointed, he was anointed to deliver all of creation. And that's what Christmas is about. It's about the one who was anointed, appointed to deliver creation. And so Christmas means that creation needed to be delivered. And so you can't really understand Christmas without understanding salvation. And you can't understand salvation unless you understand sin. You see, what creation needs to be delivered from was sin. And so you, you can't understand Christmas if you don't understand sin. So while we celebrate with different things, different colors, while we celebrate a baby that was born in a manger, it's really not even about a baby that was born in a manger. It's about God's creation needed to be delivered from sin. And no other one could do that but Jesus. And so while we don't know exactly what day he was born on, we take December the 25th to celebrate his birth. But why do you need to celebrate his birth? His birth wouldn't have been any good without his resurrection. So you can't really separate the birth from the resurrection. A matter of fact, Christmas is not even in the Bible. So I want you to think about that. Christmas is not in the Bible. The early church did not celebrate Christmas. What the early church celebrated was the resurrection. You see, the resurrection is what's important because it was his resurrection that delivered creation. But the thing of the Bible is you couldn't have had the resurrection if you didn't have the birth. So you really don't need to separate the birth from the resurrection. It's all how you see Jesus. Do you see Jesus as a baby? Well, that baby grew up. That baby became a man. That baby was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River that we studied in Sunday school this morning. That baby preached. That baby taught. That baby healed. That baby raised the dead. That baby died on the cross in Calvary. But that baby didn't stay dead. Three days later, that baby defeated death and got up from the grave. And in his giving up from the grave, he defeated sin. He defeated the devil. And he gave us the opportunity to be delivered from sin. He gave us the opportunity to be rejoined back to God. He brought creation back to God. You see, sin separated God from his creation. So the creator became a part of the creation in order to deliver the creation. And so this is what Christmas is all about. And so we need a fresh revelation of Christmas. 
And we need a fresh revelation of salvation. What is salvation? You see, most Christians think salvation means that I escape hell and I get to go to heaven. But salvation is so much more than that. Yeah. Salvation is being able to have fellowship with God before you get to heaven. And if you don't have a relationship with God before you get to heaven, you probably won't get to heaven. So that's just something for you to think about. So, so many times we only concern about do I get to he go to heaven or do I go to hell? But salvation is much more than that. And sometimes we use the word being born again and the word salvation in the chamber. But being born again and salvation is not exactly the same. Being born again means that you are a new creature in Christ. Yes. Means that you are spiritually recreated. And so being born again it's your ticket to going to heaven. But you see, God wants to enjoy you before you get to heaven. And you are to enjoy God before you get to heaven. And so, salvation means to be rescued. Salvation itself is a noun. And in the Greek, it's from the word soteria. Soteria is the Greek word for salvation, which means safety, deliverance, health, preservation from danger or destruction, soundness, wholeness, redemption. The verb save is the verb, and save is the Greek word sozo, which basically means the same thing as salvation. Salvation is a noun and save is a verb. And so uh, we have to understand salvation. Jesus just didn't die on the cross so you can go to heaven. Jesus died on the cross so you can have salvation. And I want you to think about that. There is a difference in just going to heaven and salvation. Salvation means having peace with God while you're walking on this earth. Salvation means to be healed while you're on this earth. Salvation means to be prosperous while you're on this earth before you get to heaven. And you see in heaven the streets are made of gold. But you really don't need any gold when you get in heaven because, you know, gold, the street gold is a common thing. Down here we need gold because gold is very valuable. But God wants that you to have prosperity while you're here, not just when you get to heaven. And so, salvation means much more than just being born again. It means much more than just going to heaven. To understand salvation, you have to understand sin. And what sin did to mankind into God's creation. Sin separated God from his creation. What is sin? According to 1 John 3 and 4, sin is a transgression of God's law. And 1 John 3 and 8 says that the devil sinned from the beginning and says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus came here to destroy the works of the devil. Yes. And the works of the devil is sin. Sin that disobeyed God, transgressing God's command. It was the devil who sinned from the beginning. That got kicked out of heaven. It was the devil who was in the garden of Eden who tricked Eve to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil 
So sin is a transgression of God's law. And Adam and Eve only had one law. And that was not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the devil tricked Eve to eat that tree. And Eve gave the fruit of that tree to her husband. And they both ate. And they both eyes were open to the knowledge of good and evil. And because they ate of that tree, sin entered into the world and it entered into mankind and was passed down from generation to generation in mankind. So God had to put them out of the garden of Eden, not because he didn't like them, not because he didn't love them, but he put them out of the garden of Eden so they wouldn't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and live in a sinful state forever. So because they didn't eat of the knowledge of the, the tree of, uh, because they didn't eat from the tree of life, they had an opportunity to be redeemed from the situation of sin. And so that's why Jesus came. That's why we celebrate Christmas. We're celebrating Jesus bringing us back to fellowship with God. That's why we have Christmas. It's not about all the gifts, all the bones, all the angels, but it's about celebration what God did through Jesus and bringing us back to him without sin separating us from God. And so Jesus came to this earth and so really, why Christmas is not in the Bible, the story of Christmas is throughout the Bible. And when you read the Bible, the Bible really is about salvation. From John, from Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, all the way to Revelation, the Bible is about salvation. Because in Genesis chapter 3 we lost contact with God. We lost fellowship with God. And from that point on God had worked his plan to bring us back to him. And so in Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of that plan. And so it took God many, many years to get Jesus into this earth. And so we're celebrating Jesus being born into this world. And so I pray God give you a full revelation of what it means, what Christmas means, what Jesus did for us, not just the opportunity to go to heaven, but the opportunity to have fellowship with God. And what it means to have fellowship with God. What it really means to be redeemed. To brought back. You see, Jesus restored to us everything that Adam lost. How many would like to be in the Garden of Eden? You see, Jesus restored what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. And many times we don't really think about that. We just think that we're down here on earth and one day we're going to go to heaven. And that's what salvation is. But salvation is much more than that. You see, God did not change his mind because the devil sinned. <coughs> God didn't change his mind because Adam and Eve sinned. God's purpose, when you read Genesis 1, 26 through 28, God said, let us make man in our image and life and let them have dominion over the earth. So God's plan and purpose was for man to have dominion over this earth and for man to rule this earth. 
caused everything on this earth to praise God. And for man to enjoy this world. That's what salvation means. You see, we're trying to get to go to heaven. But most of us don't realize that heaven is coming to earth. Read Revelation. You'll find out heaven is coming to earth. God and his throne is coming down to earth to be with man. That's what salvation is. And all of that was made possible because of Jesus. So salvation is not just you going to heaven. And while you're living on this earth right now, God wants you healthy. God don't want you to live on earth for 50 years, die and be sick. All those 50 years and then die and go to heaven. That's not God's plan for your life. God don't want you to live on this earth for 50 years, broke, don't have two nickels to rub together, <laughs> die and go to heaven. Salvation is much more than you going to heaven. You say being born again is salvation. But salvation is much more than just being born again. You see, Jesus came to give us salvation, which is much more than just being born again. And I thank God for being born again. But understanding all that Jesus did. You see, Jesus is salvation. That's why um, in Luke chapter 2, verse 30, which is a very short verse, which says, My eyes have seen thy salvation. Who said that was Simeon? Simeon was looking at the baby Jesus. He was eight days old when Simeon saw him in the temple. Jesus getting ready to be circumcised. And when Simeon, who had been interceding for Jesus to come in his earth many, many years, and he finally got to saw this baby. And when he seen this baby, he said, my eyes have seen your salvation. My eyes have seen it. None of us was there in that barn to see that baby being born. But we all by faith can see it. None of us was that Calvary when Jesus died on the cross. But we all by faith can see it. Because when you see Jesus, you see salvation. Jesus is salvation. He is the one who was anointed and appointed to deliver us from sin. And sin is what separated us from God. Sin is what caused us not to be the garden of Eden. Sin is what caused all the problems that we're facing in this world. But I'm so glad that Jesus came to deliver us from sin. And that's what Christmas really is all about. And so that's what we have to understand. And as Paul prayed, in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, he said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And so, as Paul prayed, that the eyes you understand be enlightened. I pray that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Not only for people who have not received Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, but even for the people 
who had received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. That Christmas is about much more than celebrating a baby. Amen. Christmas is about much more than celebrating a baby. Christmas is about celebrating the one who delivered us from sin coming into this earth. And we can rejoice because of that deliverance. And I thank God for that. Amen. And I pray that we even have a greater understanding of what it means to be delivered from sin. And that's really what we're celebrating this season. Being delivered from the sin. I thank God for the baby. I thank God for how God worked it out. The Word became flesh and dwelled among us. And there's never been a baby that was born like that. There's never been a baby as holy as that baby. But I thank God that Christmas is about much more than that. I thank God for being delivered from sin and understanding what sin has done to mankind, what sin has done to God's creation. In Romans chapter 8, verse 23, it said that the whole creation groans and travails to be delivered. And see, Jesus came to bridge, to make that bridge happen between God and his creation. And I thank God for that. And I thank God that, I, that our eyes will be open. That our understanding will be open. I pray God that those who are celebrating Santa Claus this morning, that their eyes will be open. I pray God that those who think that Christmas is just a time to have a party and just a time to be drunk, I pray God that their eyes will be open. Amen. I pray God that, that Christians who can only see Jesus as a baby would see him as their redeemer. Yes. I pray God that Christians everywhere would see the nail scars in his hands. Yes. I pray God that Christians everywhere would see the resurrected Christ. Yes. Because Christians it's much more than about a baby being born in a manger. It's about much more than Santa Claus. I uh, know a sister in the Lord, and she was upset and angry because the school teacher told her class that there was no Santa Claus. <laughs> And for some children, that may be a big heartbreak for you to find out that there is no sin to come. But you see, the truth is what makes you free. Amen. No, it's not about Santa Claus. It's about Jesus. Yes. And I don't care what age you are, you need to know that. Yes. You need to know that Christmas is about Jesus. Yes, it is. It's not about Santa Claus bringing you presents. It's about Jesus. And I pray God that we will be bold enough to tell children everywhere that that's what it's about. Amen. Children need to know. Yes, Amen. Uh, we think that Santa Claus uh, is all right for them to believe in Santa Claus and go through all that while they're a child. But you see, the day or the hour, we don't know. So everybody needs to know about Jesus. Yes. You're not too young to know about Jesus. <laughs> because he's the one that brought salvation to us. He's the one that brought deliverance to us from sin. And all of us was born in sin, shaking iniquity, 
because of what Adam and Eve did. But we can be delivered from sin because of what Jesus did. So some people think that they don't have any sin. Some people think that they haven't did anything wrong, or at least they tell you that. But the Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you know, even if you had never did anything wrong, because what Adam and Eve did, you was born in sin. Sin was passed down in the bloodline. So before you did, ever did anything wrong, you were born in sin. And so we all need a redeemer. We all need a savior. And we all need to be saved. So we all need Jesus. Amen. And that's what we're celebrating. What Jesus did for us. And the opportunity and the privilege to celebrate what he did. To celebrate his life. And we thank God for the plan that he had. That God did not forget about us. Even when we were separated from God, we were on God's mind. And we thank God for Jesus who took the penalty for our sin. Took the penalty and died for us. He just didn't die for our sins. He died in our place. Because all of us deserve to die. And Jesus paid that price for all of us. And when you think about the sins of all creation came upon Jesus at Calvary. Every sin has ever been committed, past, present, and future, came upon Jesus. And Jesus bore that. And so, as a baby, he came into this world. And he grew up and he died on the cross. And to my Catholic friend, I want to tell you that it's not about me. It's about the one that Mary carried. Amen. And so uh, we have to we have to understand that. And I pray God for a revelation that it's not about Mary. It's about the one that she carried. And the song says, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know that the one that you're carrying is going to bear not only your sin, but the sin of all creation? Mary, did you know? And that's really what Christmas is about. The baby that we're celebrating grew up and became a man and bore the sins of all creation. That creation can be rejoined back to God. That's what Christmas is about. We have the privilege to come to God. We have the privilege to stand before God. And so another thing about salvation Salvation is righteousness. You see, if you're not right now, you may not get to heaven. You see, you can't wait till you get to heaven to get right. You have to be right now. And being right is not about the good or the bad you do. Being right is about receiving Jesus. Because Jesus he was made our righteousness. We have no righteousness outside of Jesus. In Isaiah 64, it tells us that all of our righteousness is just like filthy rags. The only way you can be right with God is to receive Jesus. There is nothing that you can do to get rid of sin. You cannot be good enough to get rid of sin. You cannot repent long enough to get rid of your sin. 
And yes, you need to repent. Repent just means change your mind. But you see, you can be sorry about your sin. But if you're sorry about your sin and you never receive Jesus, guess what? You still need to see. There's many people who are sorry about their sin, but they don't receive Jesus Christ as the payment for the sin. And you can be sorry about your sin, but if you never receive Jesus Christ as the payment for your sin, you're still in your sin. And you're still on your way to hell. And so, to be right with God, you must receive Jesus. You can't come to church enough to be right with God. You can't read your Bible enough to be right with God. You can't pray long enough to be right with God. The only way to be right with God is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Because all of your coming to church won't pay you. For any of your sin. All of your reading your Bible won't pay for one of your sins. All of your praying won't pay for one of your sins. You must receive Jesus Christ as that payment. You must realize that Jesus is the one who paid for my sin. And if Jesus paid for my sin, I don't have to pay for my sin. And if I try to pay for my sin, that means I don't believe Jesus paid for it. So if I'm trying to pay for my sin, <coughs> then I can't receive Jesus as a payment for my sin. So I have to receive Jesus Christ as the payment for my sin. And you see, that's what happened with Barabbas. Barabbas was the insurrectionist and he was a murderer. And so when they got ready to crucify Jesus, Pilate said, there's two people here. There's Barabbas and there's Jesus. The Pilate said, I want to release Jesus. But the people cried out, no, we want Barabbas. So Pilate released Barabbas, who was a murderer. But the mirror got to go free. And Jesus, who had never committed a sin, got to die. And you see, that's what happened with us. We deserve to die just like Barabbas deserved to die. But Jesus paid the price. He died so that we don't have to die. So, I don't have to pay for that sin because Jesus paid for it. And so, that's what we're celebrating at this time. There was no way that I could pay for my sin. So, I thank God that Jesus paid for it. The old song says, I owe the debt I could not pay. Jesus paid the debt he did not owe. That's what we're celebrating. And so I pray God that the eyes of your understanding be open to that. And you see, the only thing that God requires of us is for us to believe that. How many believe that? That Jesus paid for your sin. Yes, you don't have to pay for it. That's right. And that Jesus paid for your sin. He died. But he didn't stay dead. Three days later, God raised him from the dead. And he got up. When the payment for all of creation's sin was paid for, God raised him from the dead. And so, in his life, I live. His life 
The life that I live is from Christ. Amen. Paul said it like this in Galatians 2 and 20. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Yes. He said, I am no longer living, but the life that I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. How many have been crucified with Christ? Amen. That's why even though I wasn't at Calvary by faith, I can see Calvary. Yes. By faith, I know that when Jesus was nailed to the cross, my sin was nailed to the cross. So that I don't have to pay for it. I couldn't pay for it even if I tried. But I thank God that he paid for it. And so I pray God for a revelation of this. I pray God that God give us a, a greater revelation. A greater understanding that Jesus is that deliverance. Amen. And so today we're celebrating a day of deliverance. That God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. That whoever believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might have life. Yeah. And so I thank God. So people want to know would God send you to hell? God doesn't send anybody to hell. You go to hell because you reject Jesus. Mm -hmm. You really don't even have to go to hell because of your sin because Jesus paid for you. But when you reject Jesus, you go to hell. Mm -hmm. And so, God didn't send you to hell. If you go to hell, it's because you rejected Jesus. <clears throat> Not because God sent you there. So God doesn't send anybody to hell. God made a way for you not to go. And it was a great price. And we celebrate that Christ. We celebrate God bringing Jesus into this world. We celebrate all that God had to do to the give virgin, to give birth to a child. We celebrate all the struggles. We celebrate the people that yielded to God in order to get Jesus in this world. Yes. And we celebrate Jesus yielding himself and giving up his life. Okay. Somebody asked, well, who killed Jesus? Really, nobody killed him because Jesus gave his life. Amen. He gave his life. He was born to die. He was born to bear our sins. He was born to die on the cross and kept Every baby that is born into the world, when the baby is born, people is wondering, I wonder what is this baby going to do? If you ever had children, if you ever had grandchildren, if you ever been around a baby, the thought has came across your mind. What is this baby going to do? What is this baby going to be? And that's why I'd like to sum Mary did you know? Mm. Mary did you know what your baby would do? Did you know what your baby would become? Mary did you know? Did you know? When Mary looked in the eyes of Jesus, what did Mary see? Mm. So Christmas it's not about Santa Claus or how you can get drunk or party. Come on. It's not even about a baby. It's about us being set free. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The price that was paid. And the joy 
of seeing that baby that would set us free. And you see, this was going on ever since Adam and Eve was here. Cain was the first person that was born into this world. And Cain's name means uh, I've gotten a man from the Lord. Because Eve heard what God said to the serpent. He said that I'm going to put image between the woman and you. I'm going to put image between her seed and your seed. It should bruise your head, crush your head, and you will bruise its heel. And from that point in time, mankind has always been looking for a mother yeah. look. Recognizing that sin had us bound. Yeah. And we needed a deliverer. And this deliverer was coming from the seed of a woman. So Eden said, here's Cain. Is this the one? So Mary, did you know? Did you know that this was the one that was set not only mankind free, but was set all creation free from the penalty of sin. And that's what Christmas is about. Amen. It's about being delivered from the penalty of sin. And what sin has done to mankind what sin has done to all of God's creation. But I thank God that Jesus grows back. Yes. And we can celebrate that. We can look forward in hope because we have received the down payment of our salvation. And that's what being born again is. Being born again is just a down payment of your salvation. It's that we have been recreated from the inside, spiritually. Our spirit has been recreated. Our soul, our minds have been renewed. And one day, we will get a new body. Man. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. Amen. It would be a body like Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Man. It would be a body that can go through walls. Wow. It would be a body that don't have blood, that functions and is sustained by the glory of God. Hallelujah. But in the meantime, God has provided healing for our bodies. Amen. So, healing is a part of salvation. Prosperity is a part of salvation. Being filled with the Holy Ghost is a part of salvation. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we try to separate being filled with the Holy Ghost, being baptized in the Holy Ghost, but they all is a part of salvation. Tongues is a part of salvation. I know some of you say, well, I want Jesus. I even want the Holy Ghost, but I don't want no tongues. Mm. It's all a part of salvation. What Jesus paid for at Calvary. The Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, but Jesus paid for it at Calvary. Yes. So that the Holy Ghost could come into this earth and that he could feel all mankind. Yes. So everybody on this earth has an opportunity to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Everybody on this earth has an opportunity to speak in tongues. And tongues is for everybody. I know some people don't want to talk. God didn't give you tongues. He gave you tongues just like he gave you Jesus. Mm -hmm. Just like everybody don't receive Jesus, everybody don't receive tongues. But it's not because he didn't give it to you. 
And so everybody has an opportunity to receive Jesus, but everybody don't. Everybody has an opportunity to speak in tongues, but everybody don't. It's just simply what you what you receive. But that's all that's what salvation really is all about. We can divide it up into parts, being born again, healing. Somebody says, well, I'm born again, but I'm not healed. But they both was a part of the salvation. Somebody said, I'm born again, but I'm broke. That's a part of the salvation. Jesus paid the price so you wouldn't have to be Amen. That's right. <laughs> You know, in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, it says, But you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But though he was rich, yet he became poor, that you who is poverty might be rich. So God don't want you broke. God don't want you sick. Jesus paid the price. And that's all a part of Christmas. We don't really think about it, but I pray God that God will give you a revelation of okay. Yes. And I'm going to close with this. Is that Jesus is God's gift to the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God will say, for God so loved the world that he gave. Jesus is God's gift to the world. The Holy Ghost is Jesus' gift to those that believe in Jesus. Tongues is the Holy Ghost gift to those that are baptized in the Holy Ghost. But they're all a part of salvation. That Jesus accomplished at Calvary. So that's what Christmas is about. Christmas is about salvation. And salvation delivered us from sin. So that we can enjoy all the fullness of God. We can be restored back to what God originally created man to be. So Genesis 1.26 is still here. Just because Adam sinned, God did not change his mind about Genesis 1 26. Mm -hmm. Some would say, oh, I can forget about Genesis 1 26. Because Adam messed up Genesis 1 26. But Jesus paid the price that we can be restored. Yes, thank you. That creation can be restored. So God bless you. Merry Christmas, and may you have a greater revelation of what Christmas really means. Yeah. God bless you.